California, bring them into New York. And uh, we've got a clip from one of the places in California. Guys, can you cue this up? We have a uh, mayor in California, and he's talking about how the immigrants are going to be brought in about 140 every 72 hours from Texas. And the people are not very happy about it at this town meeting. Can you guys play that? What we've we been told that, that most of these immigrants are families. These are mothers and young children or fathers and young children. The mayor tried to reassure constituents their safety is not in jeopardy, but his words did little to soothe a heated crowd. I'd like to know, sir, do we have a plan? And I'd like to know what that plan is in the event that these people are starting to be dumped all over town. I'm sorry, I don't feel our officials, and I apologize to everybody, are being really honest. Federal immigration officials say the immigrants processed in Murrieta are unlikely to stay in the area. What will happen is once they're processed by the Border Patrol, they will be released to ICE agents who will make sure they get to their uh, destination and or uh, transportation hubs. Murrieta's mayor says this first group of 140 people may be the tip of the iceberg. He says it's possible that every 72 hours, another group of about 140 undocumented immigrants will be coming here for processing at this facility. That's right. They don't feel like they're being told the truth. Well, guess what? Neither do we. We have a story up on InfoWars from uh, Adon Salazar. It's been picked up by the Drudge Report. Two more swine flu cases confirmed among minor detainees. And uh, this is something that broke over the weekend. We had two additional cases of swine flu virus were confirmed amongst the Central American illegal immigrant miners. This is information that came to us from the president of the uh, local Border Patrol Union. He said both cases involving juveniles were confirmed on Friday by medical personnel located at the facility. He also said about 120 people have been isolated due to exposure with the, with the afflicted juveniles. And then on Sunday, he said two more children at the Border Patrol station in Brownsville were also isolated, although they have not confirmed that those are H1N1 swine flu viruses yet. This is his comment. This is what the guy who is talking to us at the, Nor uh, the National Border Patrol Council uh, said. It is contagious, and we're transporting people to different parts of the state and to different parts of the country. And you hear people in California say, what's going on? And they're sending 140 people about every 72 hours. You heard the mayor say, and then ICE is going to transport them farther into the country. And that was his point. He said... These miners are being kept in overcrowded facilities ridden with poor hygiene. This is the ideal condition for a viral outbreak. Now, it was just yesterday I talked to Dr. Stanley Monteith on the show, and he was talking about how when HIV was first discovered, that it was treated not as a contagious disease. People were not told how to avoid exposure to it. We didn't do anything. The CDC would not do anything to stop exposure to it or to help people to stop exposure to it. No, it was treated as a political issue. And so now we have not just HIV, because it was also, they said there's increasing worries about immigrants hailing from, on, from Honduras that could be affected with HIV. It's not just HIV. It's a whole slew of diseases that have been identified. But of course, as we also reported, the CDC has no interest in this. These border officials, a Border Patrol Union has contacted the CDC, asked them for help. They said, it's not our job. Not their job. Now, one of the things behind this, of course, is we would like to get people to understand is that this is about making NAFTA a fact. As Petraeus said, this is something that was passed 20 years ago. They passed NAFTA. The laws have been on the books. Now they're making it an established fact. It was the law du jour. Now it's becoming de facto. They're making it an accomplished fact. And one of the things that he said in that speech where he said, what comes after America? Well, that's simple. North America. He means North American Union, and he made it very clear that was what he meant. He was talking about how the demographics in all these other countries are falling in Europe, even in China and other places in Asia, and yet in North America, they're increasing. It's like, really? Really? Are they really increasing? U.S. News and World Report says today that America's evolving look census shows that white deaths are outpacing births. Okay, it's not happening. They're bringing people in for that demographic increase. And yet in the same speech, he talks about how they're going to have to get along with fewer people working. They're not looking at that for the long term. They're not bringing them in 
for workers. Stay with us. We're going to have Paul Joseph Watson at the bottom of the hour. Alex Jones is going to have a special report on Agenda 21. And Peter Van Buren, a diplomat who's been in Iraq at Baghdad, gives us the scoop. Hey, folks, this is Larry Crisp for BabyBoomerBackupPlan.com. I don't have to tell you, this economy sucks. Unlike the political elite and Wall Street bankers, you know that debts don't disappear and bailouts have big consequences. Stock and real estate market bubbles can pop at any moment and evaporate most or all of your retirement savings. Folks, we're in the weakest economy of our lifetime and it's likely to get much worse. Virtually zero sectors of the economy are hiring and workforce participation is at record lows. And I'm here to tell you, this may be the best thing that could happen to you if you move decided and develop a backup plan immediately. Proportionately, more millionaires were created during the Great Depression than at any time in history, and history is about to repeat itself. Get my free report at babyboomerbackupplan.com or call 888-507-8789. That's 888-507-8789. Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Grew. It took me 20 years of searching the globe to find the deposit of the highest purity iodine available. The new Survival Shield X2 is mined from seven to 10,000 feet below the earth in pristine, environmentally clean conditions. The iodine crystals we use are extracted from an ancient 300 million plus year old deposit deep in the earth. It's the strongest nascent iodine on the market today. It delivers 650 micrograms per drop. Experience the new formula. Experience the ancient purity. Shield your family. Survival Shield X2, available now at InfoWarsLife.com. X2 from InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. It's been said, those who control the food, control the people. Are you concerned about GMO foods making you sick and affecting your mind? Many people suffer from lack of energy, insomnia, loss of stamina, weight gain, and the inability to think clearly. Genetically modified crops, processed foods, and toxic chemicals can compromise your health and are silently destroying your digestive system, which accounts for 80% of your immune system. Take back control of your health with Pro-EM1 Probiotic from Terraganics. Pro-EM1 Probiotic helps protect your body against irritable bowel syndrome, constipation, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, diabetes, the common cold, and much more. And including a powerful probiotic like Pro-EM1 as part of your daily routine puts you back in control and prevents you from becoming a mindless zombie manipulated by the pharmaceutical and GMO agendas. Call Terraganics at 866-369-3678 or visit Terraganics.com. T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. A sudden change in the wind. The day grows dark as ominous clouds move in and lightning begins to carve arcs in the sky. And you realize you are not prepared. I am telling you to take cover. The number of intense storms is increasing exponentially in the U.S. Tornadoes, hurricanes, flooding, and droughts are happening with greater magnitude and frequency. If you are choosing to rely on the government to save you... And no one's coming to help them. You could be dead wrong. The first step towards self-reliance in the face of disaster is a visit to MyPatriotSupply.com. There you'll find the absolute best prices on storable foods, non-GMO seeds, emergency water filtration devices, and so much more. All orders over $49 qualify for free shipping in the lower 48. Visit us online or call 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. And speak to one of our preparedness advisors today. Remember, before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. I'm going to be joined in the next segment, Paul Joseph Watson out of the UK. We're going to talk about some breaking articles on Infowars.com. One of them, we've now learned from Charlie Rose, who, of course, we can now trust him, even though Alex has been telling you this for a very long time, that your LED lights can be used to track you, to spy on you, even to determine if you've got firearms. How about that? 
Uh, no paranoia there because that's Charlie Rose and, and we can believe anything he has to say. Also, uh, an amazing article about a guy who lived in a prison and lived as a slave in uh, North Korea and how he can't get his head around being free. They kind of liked his slavery. So we're going to talk about uh, that with Paul Joseph Watson. Alex Jones also has a special report coming up in the second hour on Agenda 21. You won't want to miss that special report. And we're going to be talking to Peter Van Buren, somebody who for 23 years worked for the State Department. He was talking uh, after he left the State Department about how ineffective things were in Iraq. So we want to talk to him and get his take as someone who's been there, who's been fairly high up in the State Department, get his take on what uh, is going on now in Iraq, and also what we just learned on Sunday about how Blackwater was threatening State Department investigators, threatening to kill them, saying there's nothing you can or will do about this because we're in Iraq, we can do whatever we wish. And that was just a couple of weeks before they had the now infamous massacre of 17 civilians in a public area there in Iraq, including a nine-year-old. Yesterday, we had a Supreme Court decision about the Hobby Lobby, about the mandate, uh, and it was a clash of um, can the government force us to violate our religious convictions? And, of course, the left was saying, well, this is a corporation because this uh, family business decided to incorporate. Now they no longer have any religious freedom. The Supreme Court said, no, actually, they do. And the Supreme Court, I believe, made the right decision. Now, of course, we had in the dissent, we had some uh, female justices were very angry about this. The uh, uh, Justice Jen Ginsburg said, well, we're going to have a situation now where just anyone any corporation or anyone can assert that they have religious objections. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's what the First Amendment is about. Uh, she thought that was just too radical of an idea. She actually used that, that word. She said it was too radical. We saw that uh, Supreme Court Justice Kagan said that you can't do this. Congress gave an entitlement. They made a law. Well, the First Amendment says Congress shall make no law abridging the free exercise of religion, the exercise of religion. These are not just convictions that we hold quietly in the closet. And of course, there's been a lot of reactions to this and, and a lot of hate uh, calling for Hobby Lobby to be boycotted, many people calling for violence, calling for it to be burned down. Of course, it uh, doesn't look like the government's worried about that. They would be all over it if somebody was talking about burning down the White House, but you can talk about burning down people's private property and their businesses, and evidently that's not a problem. This I thought was interesting, and along the same line, we see that in Canada, a small town, city council, has canceled an event at a city-owned facility last month after learning that the event was going to be sponsored in part by Chick-fil-A. This is a town of about 85,000 people. Uh, it was going to be a, uh, an event that was going to be leased out to a Georgia-based leadership organization there in Nanaimo, British Columbia, I believe is the way it's pronounced. And this is what the city council person said. He said, um, any events that are associated with organizations or people that promote or have a history of divisiveness, homophobia, or expressions of hate, hate, I didn't know that Chick-fil-A was about hate, uh, will not be permitted by the city. And then he went on to say to compare them to organized crime. And he said, uh, I think that Chick-fil-A's beliefs are almost to a criminal point of view this day and age. Yes, they nearly have criminalized any dissent with the state religion. And when he compares it to organized crime, we need to realize that if we don't stand for due process for even the worst people, even somebody you don't like, then you're going to lose it for yourself. The RICO statutes were initially created because they couldn't get convictions against organized crime, and it wasn't too long before they were using it against abortion protesters. This is the kind of slippery slope we see, and now it's gotten to the point where they feel like they can go in and confiscate the assets of people. We just had a case where a couple who was accused of stealing medical devices took out a loan on their home. And the government came in and confiscated their funds from that loan that they'd gotten out to defend themselves. So now they're left defenseless, and they justified it in the same way that they justified attacking 
organized crime and taking away their due process. We have to stand for that, even for the worst in society, or we wind up with this kind of political correctness and tyranny. We'll be right back with Paul Joseph Watson from the UK. Stay with us. We're on.